the assessment. All applicants must clearly demonstrate the rationale for choice of the program. So this really needs to align quite strongly with your strategic plan. The capacity to undertake work in the area. So have you got the, the, the skill set, the, the right people in the right positions to deliver on the ground? Commitment to progressing work in the area of focus. A strong emphasis on participation across multiple levels, including physical activity, coaching, officiating, leadership, administration and governance. We want to see evidence of organisational capacity through performance in delivering previous VicHealth funding. Effective management of the project activities within timelines. Sound governance and management practices. Financial viability and effective financial management. Business and strategic planning. You need to consider an appropriate budget with some dedicated staff allocated to, to deliver. There is a very comprehensive Excel spreadsheet which has all the budget breakdowns. We would encourage you to, to consider that uh, and make that as detailed as possible. The evidence of working in partnership with other relevant organisations whereby they can certainly provide technical expertise, put you in contact with other people should they need to. Consideration of the sustainability of your project and the outcomes beyond the grant funding period and an ability to deliver a state or national policy. So considering some of the other things that your organisation has delivered in the past which may resemble the Everyone Wins tool implementation. Commitments. Successful organisations will need to participate in a full day introduction and training to the program, an annual full day planning workshop, quarterly forums that may involve professional development, networking, sharing of information exchange, bi-monthly meetings with the support agency or contractor, meetings with the evaluation team as required, the Vic Health Annual Let's Get Moving or Equivalent Symposium. You also need to complete annual work plans and there will be peak agencies engaged through Vic Health to support you through this process. Progress reports and a final report your own project evaluation, so considering the things that have worked well and perhaps not so well. The annual financial reporting will also be part of this. So take two key focus areas uh, make up this program. They include priority populations and alcohol cultural change. Eligible SSAs will be able to apply to one of those two key focus areas. The focus area one, based on independent evaluation, it was highlighted that the depth approach rather than the breadth approach was preferable. These are VicHealth's priority populations and other government agencies refer to these as traditionally disadvantaged communities. But they include people with disabilities, Indigenous Australians, culturally and linguistically diverse communities with emphasis on new arrivals, women or girls. For those that are interested in applying to Focus Area 1, you will need to choose one of those four groups to implement the Everyone Wins tool plus your participation project. Where state sporting associations have a membership of 80% or more females, you must work with women with a disability or indigenous women or women from culturally and linguistically diverse backgrounds. For focus area one you will need to implement the actions contained in the Everyone Wins Toolkit including the depth activity relevant to your priority population. You'll need to implement a participation project specifically for that priority population. And you'll need to work in partnership with VicHealth and the support agency and all contractors to implement your program. There are a range of peak agencies that will be engaged as part of this process to help you through the, the challenges, uh, 
to celebrate the achievements. But there will also be some other agencies which can act as contractors for your organisations. And with a fee, that will need to be discussed on a one-on-one -on -one basis. You will have to engage them. But organisations that could be considered either support agencies and or contractors may include Sports Medicine Australia, Lynn Sheehan, Council on the Aging, there's Stephanie Harper, Jan Burke, Vicksport, Anthony Bowd, the Centre for Multicultural Youth, Sue Lynn, Inclusive Leisure Victoria, Steve Peschel, RecLink, Adrian Pinozzo or Trent Mason, and the big issue, Victoria Bogue. You'll also need to work in partnership with an evaluation team to document achievements made and document the barriers that were faced. There are a range of exemplar organisations which have already been engaged by Vic Health to help with some of the more in-depth uh, delivering complex intervention strategies uh, and they will benefit your organisation by providing insight and sharing success and also detailing how they were able to overcome some of the, the challenges along the journey. These four sports are Basketball Victoria, who will be specifically working with disability communities, Football Federation Victoria, who will be working with cold groups, Surfing Victoria, who will be working with Indigenous Australians, and AFL Victoria, who will be working both with women and trying to change culture through the reduction of alcohol and sponsorships. So everyone wins. So what is this tool? As many of you are aware there are a range of different tools available all with the greatest intentions. This tool here has been designed to centralise a lot of the best practice material that is out there and is, is, is used it has been developed in partnership with a range of stakeholders and a range of those stakeholders are, are on your screen but in particular the Australian Sports Commission, the State Government of Victoria through Sport and Recreation Victoria, the Office for Women's Policy and the Office for Disability, Big Sport, universities and other peak agencies. This is the centrepiece of our investment over the next three years through the State Sporting Association Participation Program. There is another project, demonstration project taking place through Leisure Networks in partnership with Vic Health, whereby a, a club based tool will be implemented with over 100 clubs in that region. The Everyone Wins tool has been adapted to suit specifically State Sporting Associations and the full document will be made available at the commencement of funding in July. The standards and the key action areas will be available on the VicHealth website. So what is the Everyone Wins tool? There are five action areas. Champions of change are active. Expectations about behaviour are met. Facilities and activities are accessible. Everyone participates. Commitment through ongoing action. This section or these key actions are really about ensuring that your organisation can deliver healthy sporting outcomes. It is firstly looking at your own house before you can go on to deliver and advocate the benefits of creating an inclusive, safe, and warm and welcoming sporting environment. I strongly recommend that all staff and their board familiarise themselves with the Everyone Wins tool at the outset of the project. It will become very much part of your operations, certainly within the first few years of funding, and it will require strong com commitment from everyone involved. There are three levels through the Everyone Wins in each of those five action areas. These are Level 1, Welcome, 
level 2 is involve and level 3 is value. As a guide we would recommend that the, we start with the welcome level and progress each year into the next level. We recognise that many state sporting associations have different capacities and needs but we also recognise that many of you will have already progressed through many parts of level 1, the welcoming stage. So let's consider this tool in a little bit more depth. This is just a snapshot of the Champions of Change are active key action area and looking at the first level which is welcome. There on your screen you'll see that there are a number of standards and the first is the State Sporting Association Strategic Plan reflects its commitment to welcoming and inclusive sporting environments. You'll see on the right hand side that uh, general actions whereby all state sporting associations will be required to fulfil those and that will be clearly highlighted throughout the rest of the document and many if not all of you I'm sure will have already ticked that box. As another example the SSA's adopted inclusion policy or a statement of purpose and values reflecting commitment to welcoming and inclusive environments. Again this is probably another part of the, the tool that can easily be ticked off by state sporting associations. As an example for those that might focus on priority populations in, in the disability sector, here is a, a very clear example about what will be required of you. You'll see the, the column that is highlighted to uh, in the disability stream, there's a couple of check boxes that means that you'll need to specifically re relate that standard to that priority population. So for example, a plan for generating new and improving current state sporting association policies and practice is developed, implemented and reviewed annually focusing specifically on disability. Another example, the state sporting association consults its staff, members, affiliates and relevant experts of, or stakeholders when developing new policies, procedures and programs specifically related to disability. 